G'day guys, right here, and I'm joined with Ryan from Seneso, the most anticipated coffee machine, I think, of mice 2022, is the beautiful ES1. And it's a home machine, it hasn't been officially launched yet, I believe it's coming next year, fingers crossed. It's been in development for quite a few years, obviously, COVID has a lot to say in the delay of a lot of this, but thanks for joining us, Ryan, and uh, yeah, I'm going to pass it over to you to take us through this home machine, tell us all the functionality, the features, and then who, who this machine is for. Sure, absolutely, yeah. So I'll, I'll just start off by saying that this is designed to truly be like a Seneso for the home. Uh, but there are some other things that we kind of wanted to evolve and progress, including like the user interface overall. So internally, it is a multi-boiler machine. We're using a bit of a different architecture for how we're accomplishing temperature consistency and, and uh, trying to basically build a platform that allows us to deliver you know, commercial quality espresso. But for like the US household, we, we need to be able to run on 120 power versus 220. Uh, so we've made some modifications as far as that from our normal systems. Uh, but ultimately what we have is we have a big steam boiler, a smaller coffee boiler. Uh, we've got some heat exchange running through the steam boiler that's supplying superheated water that's mixing. So we're, we're mixing live waters to create the temperature of the group. The group itself is an eight pound, uh, you know, three and a half kilo uh, brass block that's also actively heated as well up here. A lot of the core architecture on the inside. Uh, in addition to that, we're using the same steam valves as we've always used on our commercial machines. So you've got the double wall cool touched uh, steam wands, same valve, and then the uh, the T spout on this side is also actually running through the same hydraulic pathway as the group. So it's also got its own kind of feature set as well that you can program. Uh, reservoir fill is right here. So you know, compared to a lot of the competition, uh, if you were a roaster and you were actually like serving coffee at an event. Say you get to that low water level, you don't have to remove the drip tray to actually be able to, to refill the water reservoir. It's just right. But when you're using it, the fun and exciting part, most folks are always going to start with manual mode. So entering manual mode, uh, it brings up a pretty clear screen on how to inter interact with the machine. I'm going to grab a cup just so we don't spray water everywhere. But as I, as I bump through the phases, just like on our MVP Hydra, we start with a pre-infused phase. Digitally, that's programmed to three and a half bars right now. When I'm done pre-infusing, I can bump to the next phase, and it's going to take me up to infusion, which is currently programmed for nine bars. So it's going to climb up. We don't have any resistance right now, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Bump over, and it goes to the ramp down. Right now, that's programmed for about seven bars. And when we're done with the extraction, we can stop it. And in the end of all that, it's going to give us a bit of a shot summary screen. So this is where we can see the volume of water, our temperature throughout the extraction, overall time. So here you can see uh, pressure and flow over time. So the blue represents the flow rate, the red represents the pressure, and how it's kind of moving throughout the shot. And then from this screen, of course, you can save this if you want to, and you can create, you can either overwrite one of your existing presets, or you can create a new one. And then if we brew this espresso, we taste it, and we realize, you know, this is fine, but we like the previous one better. And we can go into the history, and it saves all the history of your extractions. So we can go back, and, and even if it was, say, you know, four or five espressos ago, we can still click on the settings. We can uh, see yeah. the summary. We can brew it again. Uh, or from here, we can go back into it, and we can actually uh, save and, and create a preset off of this. That's excellent. Yeah. So back on the home screen, we can go to presets and we can see all of the options that we've got programs. Press one, choose to brew, hitting the paddle will just run the whole profile. There's no need to manipulate it. You can kind of just set it and let it run. Um, from this screen, if you want to adjust your workflow, let's say that you got a couple coffees on and, and uh, maybe like last week you had some coffee from Panama you've been brewing some Colombia, but you want to bring Panama back on top as your number one option, you can just basically drag and drop these to put them how you want. Or if you end up with a ton of them, you can either choose newest on top or you can go alphabetical. So you've got options for kind of managing all of that. Power save mode, so you can you can program that. It'll you know reduce the temperatures, save some energy. Uh, there's a really nice auto back flush programming on this where yeah. once you've added some puro calf or kafiza or whatever your detergent is uh, you place it in it'll run through all the cycles automatically 
it'll get to a point where it tells you to dump you know, your, your cleaning water and it'll do a clean water back flush cycle as well. We've got uh, you know, digital temperature and uh, pressure gauges for both the boilers. And then you know, just all the heaps of settings that you can adjust and change. Mm. I mentioned earlier kind of the, uh, the T-spout. And the T-spout can be actually adjusted uh, for volume. It can also be adjusted for temperature. So we've done trade shows where we've actually had tea companies making matcha drinks on this, right? <laughs> so they're just doing 35 ml out at a, at a relatively low water temp, just enough to be able to whisk the matcha, steam some milk, serve some matcha lattes. So, you know, with this, we're truly not trying to leave tea drinkers out of it. Yeah. Uh, and in theory, if you wanted to, you could actually bump it up enough that you could actually make a pour over coffee with the water coming off right. the machine as well. So for me at home, you know, I've got a little home espresso machine on my counter. I've got my grinder. I've got my coffee brewer and a hot water kettle. It all adds up. Yeah. With this, I can kind of, I can at least get rid of that hot water kettle yeah. and kind of save some space in the bar. That's fantastic. What, in terms of the going from, say, sleep mode to ready to brew, yeah. what sort of time are we talking about there? Is this something that if I'm just between coffees, like I've had my first coffee of the day, then I want my second coffee in about yeah. half an hour, just want to flick it into sleep mode? Is that the sort of function that we're looking at there? You absolutely could. Uh, I would say going from sleep mode, depending on what the temperatures are programmed to, that's adjustable. Uh, you know, you're really looking at just like three to four minutes maybe to actually bump yeah. it back up. That's brilliant. Uh, yeah, it's great here in Australia. In the States, it takes a little <laughs> longer. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it, it's it's pretty easy to, to bump up like that. Mm. And there's something true to be also said about even at home, you know, espresso machines, wearing gaskets, different parts, expanding contraction and all that. Machines are actually generally left on as best, right? Like you're with with uh, with constantly turning machine on and off, you know, you're you're wearing out seals and yeah. and parts like that uh, quite a bit more quickly. So by going into sleep mode or, or reducing kind of the energy, keeping those things still relatively warm is I think going to expand a lot of like the life of the parts that you have within the machine as well. Just going through the histories, is it, is it unlimited history there or is there a limit to how many brews we can uh, yeah. save in there? You know, uh, I with recipes, I know that it's sort of like cell phone contacts, right? right. Like as much as there is memory within the yeah. board, you can save quite a few of them. History. I want to say is, is roughly the same. There's quite a length to it. I don't know that there really is much of a cap. Well, I guess this is probably showing us at least of this is 1018 today. So probably 100, I yeah. guess, is probably what I'm looking at. I mean, there's a lot there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, and that, I mean, really, ideally, you'd be testing it and final, like making that recipe perfect, then yep. saving that, and then using that as the template each day or and then adjusting from there. Or if you've yeah. got unlimited, um, well, virtually unlimited recipes that you can save in there, then you know you bring back your Colombian that you had three months ago and then you go back into your settings and bring up the template again, obviously depending on the development of the coffee, yep. you might tweak it, but it allows you to start with that baseline to then adjust from there, which I, I really love. And I miss that on the Seneso MVB Hydra because it, once you override that profile, that's gone forever. And that, that's definitely a part of what we're trying to improve with this kind of new uh, new operating system here. And the other cool part about this is because it's so digital, you know, we're going to be able to add features over time, right? So one of the things that we hope to have by the time we launch is automatic pre-infusion, so the ability for the machine to sense when the cup or when the puck is fully saturated, and then bump you from pre-infuse into infuse. Uh, but there's other, I don't want to say too much, but we we have got other kind of keen ideas that we have for like different algorithms we want to build into the machine. Things Secrets you can kind of do automatically over time. Uh, ways that would just allow a home barista to be able to make coffee easier mm. or make a professional barista, you know, in, in certain environments, be able to make, you know, even better coffee. So, yeah, one thing I love always about the Senesos is their dedication to the precision and the craftsmanship of that. And I assume you're bringing a lot of the tech and the same precision that you've got with the MVP Hydra, bringing yep. that into the ES1 now. 100%. That's that's exactly it. We want to, we wanted to, you know, hold on to like what makes that system so great but also evolve it to make it easier to interact with and use i mean everybody's talking about touch screens nowadays i think at the end of the day what really matters is not just the touch screen but like the operating system the functionality the user friendliness and uh that's something i think we put a lot of time and effort into this is trying to make a system that's that's approachable easy to use not over complex 
uh, just just a, a user friendly environment that people enjoy using on a daily basis. Yeah, and looking at the 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 box, the shell of it, what we've got a white one here, we've got a blue one there. Yeah. Are there other colors? Are there other? You know, I really love the timber that I can get, the custom timbers yeah. that I can get on the MVP Hydra. Yep. Do we have that same availability on these ES ones? Ab absolutely. Yeah, we've uh, we've actually so Pantechnicon Design in the states is a company that's pretty popular. We've already been engaging with them. And, uh, on letting them get like the measurements and all that to be able to design custom uh, timber that could be you know used with the machine. Standard colors are going to be white, black, similar to the S series that we already have, the red, and then this new blue that we've developed. True Seneso fashion, any RAL color will be available for powder coat if people want to customize it and truly make it their own. Yeah. So we're not we're not steering away from that at all. Uh, it's very much through and through a Seneso, hand built by by our team in Seattle. Uh, enough, no corners being cut in any kind of way at all. And that's what I love about Seneso itself is just that the fact that there are no corners being cut. It's true craftsmanship at its best. And for a home user, you want that. I mean, not everyone can get a MVP Hydra. And I think the ES1, depending on, I don't know where it sits in the market range in terms of pricing. Has that been uh, formalized yet? Do you know? We, we've got some targets in mind. So we're, uh, we're basically trying to go to market kind of sitting right between the GS3 and the Slayer 1 group yeah. is kind of what we're looking at. Uh, in the US, it's going to be about a 9,000 US dollars. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're, I feel really comfortable with what we've done with this machine. I feel like there's some really great features we're trying to bring with it that, uh, you know, the technology I think will justify kind of the price point. Yeah, and I think it's one of the only machines, there's only a couple of machines out there that have the integrated display that actually allow you to analyze post shots and then bring back up profiles and reuse them again, which is just lovely to see. Now, can we get a coffee on this one? I've been dying to try it, so yeah. maybe we can get a long black. One of the things we are thinking about down the line as well with those graphs is the ability to also lock in, say, flow rate, right? Yeah. So as you lose the resistance in the coffee bed, yeah. instead of seeing the flow rate increasing, keeping it fixed, it's going to work itself out. So there's a few few ideas, a few different. And I assume then you'll be able to also lock in the pressure to create that as your fixed point, and then the flow will change as well. I mean, you've already got the ability to do ramp up ramp down yeah. and uh, pre-infusion as well. This was on standard on all the MVP Hydras. Yep. It's beautiful. So thanks very much for talking with us, Ryan. It's Ryan from Seneso. But of course, if you're in Australia and you're wanting to talk to someone about the Seneso ES1, get hold of Extracted Espresso Solutions down in Melbourne. They have also representatives around Australia as well, but they are all really highly experienced uh, baristas or Q graders. Nancy, who works down here in Melbourne, is a Q grader. Uh, and I know Jace, he's a fantastic technician, will understand all the ins and outs of the machine. So if you want to understand more, or you want to learn more, or talk to someone in Australia and get on the waiting list for this in 2023, then please contact Extracted Espresso Solutions. Yeah, thanks very much for talking yeah, with us, Ryan. My pleasure. I'm Ryan, your coffee coach, and as always, enjoy your brew. Beautiful.